Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Lamed Aleph, Daf 31 of Nesech Taksubis. Friends, well, Daf Lamed Aleph, uh, we continue, you know, we, we had said yesterday that Rav uh, Chizda had said that according to Ibn Khunya ben Akona, that, you know, even though Ibn Khunya ben Akona says that if a fellow eats, uh, that, right, that if um, a fellow is chayv karis, so he is um, potter from having to pay for any uh, financial things that may have happened at the same time. However, if the financial thing happened before he was chayv karis, well, then he's going to be uh, chayv to pay for the thing. So, for example, if you have a fellow who eats, uh, um, if who, who steals chaylev and then he eats it, right? So, 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 he was already chayv to pay for the chaylev that he stole before he actually ate the chaylev and made himself chayv cars. So therefore, in that case, Ibn Khunya ben Akona says that uh, he will be chayv to pay for, for, for the lost object, for, for, for the stolen object, for the stolen chaylev. So, we are going to, um, it's a very conceptual daf. So we're going to kind of explore that concept and it's gonna, yeah, it gets into like sugis from Masech to Shabbos, Hotza, is, there's a sugis I guess that we've seen before in Masech to Shabbos, but, uh, conceptual stuff. Here we go. When the Flamaral, Flamaral, uh, top line of the page. Gufa. We said earlier. Omer of Chizde says of Chizde, Moder ibn Khuni ben Akone, there ibn Khuni ben Akone, even though he says, that uh, in general we would we would apply commonly with the rabbinine by by a chiyuv of karis that if you chay of karis you'd be potter from paying. However, begoniv chelbo shel chaveroi that if a fellow steals chaylev from his friend veachol and then he eats it. Now of course eating chaylev is a chiyuv of karis, but he, before he ate the chaylev he stole it first. Shel chayiv that he's going to be chayiv to pay for the chaylev that he stole. Shikvan is chayiv begneve kodem shavu the day is a chaylev because he was already chayiv. For stealing, before you, he, he, he ate the chaylev and made himself chayv kars. So he still gotta pay back his friend from whom he stole the chaylev. Lema pliga durabov. So here we go. So now let's say that, um, Rav Chizde, who says that he's gonna be chayv to pay for the chaylev that he stole, let's say that he argues on Rav Rav Oven to Omer Rav Oven, says Rav Oven, Hazorek chutz mitchilas arba the sof arba that if a fellow throws an arrow for uh, Amis in Rishus Arab, that of course we learned in Mesech to Shabbos, Mesech to Erevin, all about Hotza uh, and Haavara, right? So you're not allowed to do an Akira and a Hanocha. Friends, you remember this stuff? You're not allowed to pick up Epis and Rishus Arabim and move it for Amis and put it down. That's uh, Ha'avara. So if a fellow picks up an arrow and throws it for Amis in Rishus Arabim, so he's chayv for being Mavir Chayv at Stalar Amos. Now, what happens in this case is that along the way, it tore through like a sheet, right? It tore through some kind of fabric. It tore through a sheet, let's say. So he picked up an arrow. So he did an Akira, he picked it up, and then he threw it down at Amis, and then it landed, there was Anacha. Along the way, it tore right through a sheet. So now, you can have to pay for that sheet that you just ruined. But the thing is, No, he doesn't have to pay for the sheet. Because he's Chayiv uh, Misa, right? He did a, he did a Isra Shabbos, a Chilol Shabbos, um, with the Ha'avara, right? He picked up this arrow, threw it to Ramas, it landed. That's a, that, right? That's an Isra Shabbos right there. And he picked up the arrow, did an Akira, threw it, and then before the Hanocha, right, as he says, She'akira Tzorah Hanochi, that even though the arrow tore the garment and that at that point he would be chayv to pay for the garment and that happened before the arrow landed four almost later 
So even though the garment got torn before the arrow landed, but before the garment got torn, he first had to pick up the arrow. And right, he says, Akira Tzorech Hanochai. And picking up that arrow initially is necessary for the ultimate landing of the arrow for Amos later, which means that we consider the tearing of the garment to be sort of part of the process of the Chilo Shabbos. That he picks up the arrow in one place, throws it, and it lands in another place. And along that trajectory, which begins with picking it up and ends with it landing, this garment got ripped. And therefore it's considered that the garment happened during the Chil, that the tearing of the garment happened as part of the process of the Chil Shabbos. And therefore, since he's Chayiv for the Chil Shabbos, which is Chayiv Skilo, he's Potter for, uh, the, the, the monetary, uh, uh, the financial, the monetary obligations, the financial obligations that he got himself into by tearing somebody else's garment. And now the question is, if that's what Rabbi Oven says, well then, hachonami hagba tzorich achiloi. Well then, why shouldn't we argue here that no? What what did uh, what did Rav Chizda say? Rav Chizda said that according to Mnuchuni ben Akona, even though we say kom lebidrab mine by chorus. And you would think that if you eat chelev, you'd be potter for having to pay back the fellow you stole from. However, says of Chizda that since you you picked up the chelev first, and by picking it up, you stole it, and you haven't yet eaten it, you only eat it afterwards. So since you were chayv for Geneva first, and only became chayv karis later, so therefore you're going to be chayv for the um Geneva. You have to pay back your friend since the since the since you stole it first before eating the Khalif. Now the question is, don't you have to pick it up in order to eat it? How else you can eat it? Don't you have to pick up the Khalif to eat it? And therefore shouldn't we argue that just like when you pick up an arrow, throw it for Amis and it lands and you chayev for Shabbos, but you're put it for the sheet that you tore along the way, since picking it up initially was part of was necessary for the uh, landing of it, and therefore the um, the um, the uh, the uh, uh, thing that tore in the middle got torn sort of as part of the process of the chilul Shabbos and Yispater. So I should say that since picking up the chelev is part of eating the chelev, so therefore I should say that it the, it's not considered separate; it's considered part of the iser of eating chelev, and therefore since he's chayiv karis for chelev, so you should be potter. To have to pay back his friend who's chelev he stole. And from the fact that Rav Chizda explains that according to Rav Nechunia ben Akona, he'd be potter for paying back his friend. So Mimele, he doesn't hold like um, Rav Oven because Mistama, Rav Oven would say that since he has to pick up the chelev in order to eat it, he would be potter from paying back his friend for the chelev since he's chayv cars for eating it. The Gemara says, no, it's not a good comparison. Hachi ashto when it comes to the arrow, it's impossible to have an anocha without an akira, right? It's it's two sides of the same coin, right? An uh, hanocha itself is not enough, and an akira itself is not enough, as we know from the first Mishnah uh, Masech to Shabbos, at least with regard to Otsa, but I think it's the same halachos by Otsa and Avar, I think that uh, right with the oni and the balabayis, and right one of them does the akira, the other one does the anocha. You need one person to do the Akira and the Anocha. So, 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 so therefore, when it comes to Isr Shabbos by Ha'avara, it's impossible to have the Akira without the Anocha. Somebody's gonna have to pick it up. Right? And therefore, when the Akira starts, that is sort of the beginning of the Malacha. And then the, and then the Hanocha ends. And if along the way the a garment gets ripped, you're gonna be potter for that. Hocha, Efshur la Akhila, Bloag Boyu. However, over here by the chelev, you don't have to pick up the chelev to eat it. The boy gochin vaochil. You can eat it like a dog. You can, you can, you know, put your hands behind your back and peck at it like a dog or a chicken. So therefore, since you don't have to pick it up, so therefore we consider the the picking up and by and by doing so, the uh, 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 acquisition of the chelev, the stealing of the chelev, to be a separate concept. And you will be chayev separately for stealing the chilev, and you have to you will have to pay your 
friend back for stealing the chalif. Iboi, where am I? Inami, alternatively. Iboi la adure lo motzi mahadur. Hosum, iboi la adure lo motzi mahadur. Look. That when it comes to the arrow, once you pick it up and you throw it, it's already too late. You can't take it back. And therefore, sort of when, when the karmic got ripped along this trajectory that sort of you couldn't prevent at that point, it's therefore considered tied up as part, you know, as part of the Akira and the Anocha, that from the time of the Akira, you couldn't really take it back once he threw it. Whereas Hocha, Motsi Mahadula, whereas over here, even once he picks up the Chalev, he could always uh, uh, put it back down, right? It's not like it's too late, and therefore we consider, right? We don't consider the the um, the picking up of the chaylev and the eating of of the chaylev all to be considered like one uh, fell swoop. Rather, we, we 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 treat them separately because at any time you could have stopped it, and therefore uh, he's going to be chayev separately for the uh, paying back his friend the ch- for the chaylev that he stole. Ma'ika bein haylishno la haylishno, and what's the nafkemine? Between whether you say that it's because you have to do an Akira in order to do Anacha versus if you say that once you did the Akira and you threw it, you couldn't take it back. The Nafkamina would be in a situation where you didn't throw an arrow, but you picked up a knife in Rishus Arabim and carried it for Amis and then put it down. And along the way, you tore Epis. So according to the first uh, understanding that, well, you can't have a Hanukkah without Akira. You first have to have an Akira. And if the thing gets torn along the way between the Akira and the Hanukkah, it's considered like it was part of the same activity. And therefore you're going to be potter for tearing the thing. Hachanami, where am I? So Hachanami, Yevshu la Hanukkah below Akira. So you're also by the knife, you know, the the law, the same laws apply. You need an Akira, you need a Hanukkah. If the thing gets torn along the way, you're going to be potter. But according to the opinion that says that once the arrow leaves his hand, he can't take it back magically, well, that's not the case over here by the knife. So then maybe over here, Utaka Bichayib, if he picks up the knife and he's carrying it and then it tears the garment, he could have stopped it at any time. He's carrying it. So that's enough communion between if you say that it's about you need an Akira and Anocha, here also by the knife, you need an Akira and Anocha. But if you say it's about that you couldn't take it back, well, by the knife, you could always take it back. It's in your hands. Friends, what do you what, know? What, 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 what do you think about this sugya? And how to conceptualize the eating of the chayla? Was it before the chorus? Is it inherently tied together with the chorus? How does it compare to throwing an arrow? It's, it's a sugya right here, no? It's a sugya, it's a sugya. Friends, if you thought that was a sugya, listen to this. Gufa Omer Rebovin, okay, so Rebovin had said, Azorik hates Mitchilis Arba, the Sof Arba, or so if a fellow takes an arrow and he throws it, he picks it up in Rishus Arabim, throws it for Amis and it lands in Rishus Arabim, Vikarishuan, by the Chasun, along the way, it tore through a garment, Potter, so we said that he's gonna be a Potter, he's gonna be exempt for paying for the garment, Shakira, Zore, Hanoche, he, because the picking up of the arrow is necessary for the ultimate landing of the arrow and the picking up and putting it down, collect, you know, together, um, is what constitutes, um, a havara. And for that, yuchayev. And since the, um, tearing of the thing happened between the akira and the alocha as part of the sort of activity of havara, you can be potter for the tearing of the garment. Most of uh, was there more? Fine. So Beva Barabaye Take has a kashe. Hakonev kiss bishabas. We've seen this in Mesech the Shabbos. Maybe other places are it. Let's see. We didn't do Baba Basu yet. We didn't do Sanajunet. Shabbos we did. Okay. Mesech the Shabbos. Hagonev kiss bishabas. Chayev. If a fellow um, steals a wallet on Shabbos, He's, he's liable for that. Meaning, uh, if a fellow um, um, picks up, right? If a fellow goes into his friend's house, picks up his wallet, and takes it outside. So, not only is he chayiv for hotza, right? He did an akira inside his friend's house. He picked it up in his friend's house, and then took it outside to the Rishus HaRabim, and he put it down. So, he had an akira in Rishus HaYochid, HaAnocho, and Rishus HaRabim. Memele, he's going to be chayiv skila. Um, 
Now, but at the same time, what do we say? Agonev kiz b'Shabbos. So if a fellow steals his friend's wallet from his house on Shabbos, chayev. So he's going to be chayev not just for for the for the Easter Shabbos for Hotza, but oichet to pay back for the wallet. Shekvar nischayev begneve kodem shiovel the Easter skila because he was he had to pay his friend back before he took it outside and was chayev for Shabbos. Meaning from the second that he picked it up. Right, just like we were saying by the uh, chaylev, from the second that he picked it up, he, he he stole it, and at that second, he becomes chayv to pay back his friend. He then goes outside, and he's chayv for Shabbos. But he was chayv uh, for his uh, to pay back his friend before he was chayv for Shabbos, and therefore, um, and therefore he's got to pay back his friend. Hoy Megar Vyotse continues the um Brice, Hoy Megar Vyotse, that if a fellow right that if instead of picking it up, he schlepped it. So the wallet was on the floor, he took a string and he uh and he schlepped it, he dragged it from uh, inside the house to outside of the house. So in that case, right Megar Vyotse, Megar Vyotse Potter. So in that case he doesn't have to pay back his friend for the wallet because there so the Isra of Otsa and the Isra of stealing it uh, happen at the same time. We're going to analyze soon a little bit uh, what exactly was the schlepping of the wallet. But basically the theft happened at the same time, right? Or as part of the process of, as part of uh, uh, the Otsa of Shabbos, the Isra of Shabbos. And therefore it's going to be Potter in that case for paying back for his wallet because the um, the uh, Geneva and the Isra Shabbos happen together, and therefore um, he's going to be potter for paying back his friend for the wallet. Now, Frechti Gemar, what did we just say? We said a few things. Number one, we said earlier that if a uh, fellow throws an arrow for Amos and Rishus Arabim, so he does an Akira, and then he throws it for Amos and Rishus Arabim, then there's Anocha, and along the way it tore a garment, so we had said that he's going to be potter from paying for the garment because the the initial akira was necessary for the ultimate hanacha, and along the way the garment got ripped. So he's potter for the garment. Now we had just said in this brisa with the wallet, however, that if he, the fellow picks up the wallet in his friend's house and then he takes it outside, he's going to be chayiv to pay for the wallet since he was first chayiv for the. Uh, uh, picking up of the wallet for the stealing, the theft of the wallet before he was hired for the Shabbos. But one second, shouldn't we say that just like the Akira is necessary for the Anocha, so also picking up is the wa- of the wallet, right? Is necessary, right? That, that, right? That the Akira is part of the Anocha here as well. Let's see. That picking up the wallet is necessary in order to then take it outside. And therefore, why are we saying that he's chayv to pay back his friend for the wallet because he stole it before he took it outside? But how did he steal it? He stole it by picking it up. And isn't picking it up, i.e. doing the akira, necessary in order for him to be chayv for hotza? So therefore, shouldn't he be potter for the um, for the theft since it, he stole it by picking it up, which is necessary in order to, to, to violate this or Shabbos? So if we're saying that... Um, so if if so, you know, so 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 if we're saying that by the arrow is potter because the akira is tzorich anocha, so then why does it make sense to say that he's going to be right? Meaning, so by the arrow is potter from pain because the akira is tzorich anocha. So then why are we saying by um, the wallet that he's chayv? He stole it by picking it up, and picking it up was necessary in order to ultimately put it down and be chayv for a uh, hotza. So and for the gemara, achav mayaskinon. He going shake bio amnas lats neo. Okay, so you want to say, well, what happened in this case is he picked it up, but when he picked it up, he wasn't planning to take it outside. He thought he was going to pick it up and put it down. Vinimloch, and then, and then only afterwards, Vinimloch he changed his mind, votzio, and took it outside. And therefore, we treat the two things separately. He picked it up. He wasn't planning to to put it, take it outside. He was planning to put it somewhere. And so at that point, he was high for the Geneva. He had no intention yet of taking it outside. So he's high for the Geneva. And then he changes his mind to take it outside. So then he takes it outside. And now he's high for Otsah. 
So he's high for the Gneva and the Hotzah separately. And therefore, um, that's why he's going to be chayv to pay back his friend for his wallet. But if chayv gave him chayv, but one second. If that was really the case, that he picked up the wallet with no intention of taking it outside, right, and, and doing a Isser Shabbos, and only then, only afterwards, once he already picked it up, he changed his mind and took it outside, he wouldn't be chayv for Hotzah in that case. The Amr of Simon, Amr of Ami, Amr of Yochanan, if you have a fellow who's moving things around from this corner to that corner, and then he says, you know what? This is no fun. Instead of moving things from one quarter to another corner, I have a better idea. Why don't I move it from one house to the outside? Instead of just moving things around inside, why don't I take them outside? Potter. So he's Potter from Mutsa. Because that wasn't his initial his intention when he picked it up. When he picked up these items, he wasn't saying, I'm going to pick these things up and bring them outside. His initial intention was he was going to pick them up and move it to a different corner. He then changed his mind and took them outside. He's potter for that. So therefore, if he, it, going back to our case, if he picked up the wallet with no intention of taking it outside and only later changed his mind to take it outside, he would be potter from Shabbos anyways. He wouldn't be chayv for, 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 for Isra Shabbos. So lo teima amnas latzniyo elo eima amnas lo tzio. So rather, no. So don't say that he picked it up with the intention of uh, putting it somewhere, and then he changed his mind to take it outside. No, rather he picked it up with the intention of taking it outside. Well, if he picked it up with the intention of taking it outside, so then why is he? Um, well, then back to our original question: Why is he chayv to pay back his friend for his wallet if he picked up the wallet? with the intention to bring it outside, and then he brought it outside, well then, picking it up was necessary as part of ultimately, uh, as part of the hot sauce, therefore he should be potter from paying back his friend for the theft. So, Well, here, it's talking about where he stopped. Oh. So he picks up the wallet, he's high for the Geneva. He starts moving, and then he stops. And then he starts moving again and takes it outside. So now, you have two separate things. He picks up the thing, he's chayv for the Geneva. Starts walking, he stops. He starts walking again, that's a separate Akira. Right? Because when he stops, it's considered Anacha. And then he starts walking again, and it's a new Akira. And then he takes it outside, and it's Anacha over there. So you have two separate things. You have the theft that happens when he picks it up. And then you have the Hotza, which happens from the second time he starts walking again, until he then gets outside and puts it down. So that's why he is chayv. But one second, Frakti Gemara. Omad Lamai, how come he stopped? Ilikotev, or if he stopped because he, you know, it was heavy and he had to just take a breather, well, that's not actually considered a, a, a hanocha. It's just considered as, you know, that he picked it up inside, he started walking, he had to take a break to take a breather, but then he kept going. That's not considered a separate uh, akira and hanocha. It's just part of a normal way to walk. Ela ba'omid lafush. So rather, it's talking about where he needed to take a, where, where he needed, I'm sorry, one second. No, I'm sorry, the katev is not to take a breather, the katev is because he had to fix it on, I'm sorry, he had to fix it on his, on his shoulders, right? He picked up the, the item and it was like heavy, he had to just kind of, you know, wiggle it around a little bit and then he kept on moving. So then, that's not, right, that wouldn't be considered a separate, uh, walking. Rather, no, he took, a, 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 he stopped in order to take a break. So he picked up the thing, he, he stopped to take a break, then he started again, and that is why he's going to be uh, chayv. So he picked up the item, he was chayv for, st- for stealing. He then started moving, he stopped to take a break, and then he started going again and took it outside. He's going to be chayv separately for the Geneva and for the Hotza. But one second, Avalokotev, my potter. So, so we're then going to say, like we said a second, you know, if what we said a second ago is true, so then we're saying then that if he had picked up the wallet, and at that point, he stole it, and then he started taking it outside, and he had to just stop for a second to move it around on his back or something, and then he kept on going and went outside. So in that case, he would be potter from having to pay back for the wallet, since he picked up the wallet and did the uh, Akira, sort of as, as a necessary part of taking it outside, and therefore therefore the theft came as part of the Hotza, as part of the Isra Shabbos, so he'd be potter. But if that's the case, Adetoni, are you Megayi Vyotze, Megayi Vyotze, potter, 
If the Bryce is already giving us a second case, right? Meaning the first case was where he picked it up and he took it outside. We say he's chayev for the wallet. And then we say, but if he was schlepping it on the floor and took it outside that way, he's going to be potter. So already we're giving distinctions between in what case he's chayev and in what case he's potter. Well, well, let's get into more details. When do we even say that he's chayev when he picks it up and takes it outside? But Omid lafush. Only if along the way he stops to take a break. But if he stops just to fix it on his shoulders or whatever, uh, potter, then it would be potter, right? So if there is a distinction to be made between how you're stopping, well, just like we make a distinction between how you took it outside, whether you picked it up first or whether you schlepped it, well, then I should also say, and by the way, when you, when you pick it up first, you're also, you're only chayv if you stopped in the middle in order to take a breather, but if you stopped in the middle in order to move it around on your shoulders to make it more comfortable, you'd be potter. So from the fact that we don't make this distinction, it must be that that is not uh, what we are talking about. So Ella, so rather the Gemara gives an alternative answer. So in what case is he going to be chayev when he picks it up in the house and takes it outside? Hanimili, what? Ella, hane, homoni, Ella, homoni, ben azahi. Rather, it is the opinion of Ben Azai to Amr Mahalich Omidomi that walking is like standing, meaning that each step is considered like its own Akira and Anocha, its own, like its own picking up and taking and putting down. And therefore, when he picks up the wallet, he's chayev for theft, and then he's walking outside, and he, um, you know, each, uh, and, you know, each step is a separate Akira and Anocha, so therefore, the Akira that he does inside the house and the Anocha that he does outside the house, key, like the last step that he takes inside the house and the first step that he takes outside the house, which is the Akira and the Anocha that he's chayev for Yisr Shabbos is separate than when he picked it up. So he picked it up, he's chayev for Geneva, and then he starts walking and each step is considered like a separate Akira and Anocha until finally he gets outside. And the Akira, the last step from inside the house and the first step from outside the house, which is essentially the Akira and Anocha that he's chayv for this, so Shabbos is separate from when he had initially picked it up then, and he was chayv for the Geneva. But Avazorik, my potter, what? But then we're implying, but if he wouldn't have uh, picked it up and walked outside, rather if he would have picked it up and thrown it outside, he'd be potter because the Akira was necessary for the Anocha and then and, and, and the picking up of it was part of the Hotza. Niflok v'nes nebedida. But just like we asked about the, how he's stopping, then we also have to, you know, we can say, well, why don't we make a distinction about how exactly this, um, this, uh, wallet is getting outside? When do we say he is chayev? When he picks up the wallet and then walks outside. But if he picked up the wallet and threw it outside, he would be potter because picking up the wallet, which is how he's stealing it, is really part of the hotza. So, Megaiver Yotze, it's trichale. So we say, really the Chiddush over here is about Megayar of Ryotze. It's really about how, right, right, the, right, the Seifa, when it says that he's schlepping out the wallet, so then he is going to be potter because it is, um, because, um, the, the, the Hotza and the Gneva happen at the same time. So, okay, the Gemara is saying, Enochinami, right? We can make these distinctions, but the point, we didn't need, those aren't in, interesting as distinctions. Those aren't important distinctions. The, the more significant distinction is the distinction about that when you schlep out the item, right, the wallet from inside the house to outside of the house, so then, uh, you're going to be potter for the theft because you're stealing it when you schlep it outside, the, right, the, since you never picked it up. So the theft and the, and the, and the acquisition of the item what that's the same thing. The theft and the and 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 the iser of Hotza and Shabbos are happening at the same time. Um, where am I? Megaviyotze is tfiyichale. Sakadati chamina, because I may have thought to say, "Ain derech Hotza b'chach." I may have thought to say that um, the schlepping some schlepping a wallet outside is not a normal way to take something outside, and therefore I would be potter. Komash Milan. So therefore, it's coming to teach no that you're chayiv for Shabbos. And, but you're gonna be potter for the, um, for the, for the theft since it all happened together when you're schlepping it outside of Umay. Now, how big is this wallet? Iberavave, if it's a big wallet that's difficult to carry, well, orchiu, well, then it makes sense to schlep it outside. Ibizutrain, if it's really small, then lav orchiu. Then it dafka doesn't make sense to schlep it, you know, with like a string or something on a leash. It's a small little wallet. Well, you pick it up and take it out. And therefore, if you're not doing it in the normal way, you should be, uh, you know, it should only be awesome with the you should be part of midor aisa. Ella b'mitzoy. Rather, it's talking about uh, sort of a a um, a middle 
a middle-sized kind of uh, uh, way to to um, to um, to take it out with the apke lehecho. So now the question is, where exactly is he? Um, Right, so many so right, right, so the Kiddush that it had to tell us is that it's a middle sized uh, wallet and, and he's high for, for, for schlepping it out. Okay, if it's a big wallet, so obviously, you know, it makes sense to schlep it out and obviously you're going to be high, right? So it's talking about a middle sized wallet that sort of, and we're saying that if you schlep it outside, uh, you're going to be, uh, high. So now where is he schlepping it out into? If he's schlepping it out, this wallet, from a Rishus into a Rishus <clears throat> Isr Shabbos Ika, okay, fine, so then it will be an Isr Midar Isa, right? So you got your Tzotzah from Rosh Hashayoch to Rosh Hashayoch, that's definitely Isr Midar Isa. But Isr Gneva Leka, but there won't be an Isr Gneva because the assumption right now is that if you schlep something, if you do a Kenyan Meshicha, right, if you, if you cone something, if you acquire something by, 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 by pulling it, the assumption is that you will not be able, you cannot make a Kenyan Meshicha, you cannot acquire something through schlepping, in Rishus Arabim. And therefore, while schlepping out this wallet from Rishus Ayachat to Rishus Arabim, you'll be chayv for Otsa, you will not be chayv for theft because schlepping something in Rishus Arabim is not considered, um, uh, acquiring it. And therefore, you wouldn't be chayv for the, uh, theft. Either apke, and therefore, if you're not chayv for the theft, since, and, you know, you don't have to tell me that you're potter, obviously you're not potter, it's not considered theft. Either apke Rishus Ayachat, and if he's taking it from one Rosh Hashayach to another Rosh Hashayach, Isur Gneva Ika, okay, fine, so I understand what we're talking about with the Isur Gneva, because you're taking it from Rosh Hashayach to another Rosh Hashayach, and schlepping it would make a Kenyan. But Isur Shabbos Lek, from one Rosh Hashayach to another Rosh Hashayach, is not the uh, Osir Midorais on Shabbos. So the Tzricha, the Apke Litzide Rosh Hashayach, rather it's talking about a situation where he's schlepping out this item from Rosh Hashayach into Tzide Rosh Hashayach, into sort of the sides of Rosh Hashanah, right? There was like an area that like sort of on the, on the, on the, right? You would have a house and then I guess you would have a chotzer and then outside of your chotzer there would be Rosh Hashanah, but they would put up like little kind of like, they would make like buffer zones between Rosh Hashanah and like the walls of the houses so that there would be kind of like, you know, just some extra space so that you don't have like animals and people rubbing up against the walls and breaking things. So they would have this buffer zone. So you're schlepping it out from Rosh Hashanah into a buffer zone. Um, Okay, and we're saying that Tzidei Rishus Arabim. So, so and we're saying that the Tzidei Rishus Arabim. Uh, this is why this is the case where we're saying that you would be, um, um, you know, Chay for Otsar but Potter for Geneva Uchman. Who's it like? Ikra Beli Azu Damer Tzidei Rishus Arabim Kishus Arabim Damu Benafrekti Gemara. I don't understand. If we treat the sides of Rishus Arabim, we treat Tzidei Rishus Arabim like Rishus Arabim. Well then, Isr Shabbos Iko, okay, so I understand what the Isr Shabbos is, you're going from Rishus Ayachot to Rishus Arabim, but Isr Gneva Leka, but what are we talking about, that there's a potential Isr Gneva over here, there, 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 there's no Isr Gneva, right, we said, schlepping in Rishus Arabim, you're not actually making a kinin, so there's no Isr Gneva. Iker and if it's like the rabbis, and if it's like the rabbis who say that we do not treat the sides of Rishus Rabbim like Rishus Rabbim, well then Isur Gneva Ikaf, so then sure, it, it might be theft because you're, you're, you're schlepping it in Rishus Rabbim and you're making a kinyan on it. Hey, Rishus Ayochid, well, in a place that's not, if it's not Rishus Rabbim, so then, you know, by schlepping it, you're making a kinyan on it. So Isur Shabbos Leka, but there's no Isur Shabbos if it's not Rishus Rabbim, so then, I mean, if it's not Rosh Hashanah, so then you can make a Kenyan, but if it's not Rosh Hashanah, then it's not Hotza. You're not taking from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Right? Hotza Midorais is from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. And if we're saying that see the Rosh Hashanah is not considered like Rosh Hashanah, so then you won't be high for Hotza. There won't be any Yisr Shabbos happening. So, Olam Kribbe Liezer, we say, look, really it's like Kribbe Liezer, that see the Rosh Hashanah is considered like Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, when you schlep the thing from Rishus Ayachid into Tzidei Rishus Arabim, you're chayv because it's considered like Rishus Arabim. V'chi Om Rabbi Eliezer Tzidei Rishus Arabim Kishus Arabim Damu. But when Rabbi Eliezer says that the Tzidei Rishus Arabim is considered like Rishus Arabim, Hanimile the Inyan Chiyuv of the Shabbos. That's only with regard to the fact that it's Rishus Arabim and you'll be chayv for Otsa on Shabbos. But right, the Zimnin the Dracha Ke Rabim Va'ayle Dosim because there are times when the people crowd into the these buffer areas. Have a linen mikna, Connie. 
But with regard to making a Kenyan, we do not treat it like Rosh Hashanah to say that you cannot make a Kenyan by schlepping. Rather, with regard to making a Kenyan, you can make a Kenyan. My time I come to Allah Shri Chirab. Because there aren't so many, there aren't generally so many people there, and therefore we could say that you can make a Kenyan over there. Okay. So, so that's how to understand the second part of that price, right? That we say that if he was schlepping the item from the wallet from inside the house to outside of the house, so he's going to be chayib for Shabbos and he's going to be potter for the Geneva. And we say that he's going to be chayib for Shabbos because it's like Rabbi Yezra that he schlepped it to Tzideh Rosh Hashanah. And Tzideh Rosh Hashanah is like Rosh Hashanah. And therefore he's chayib for Otsar from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. But at the same time, he's also, right, he's going to be potter for the Geneva that even though he, he stole it by schlepping it in his Tzideh Rosh Hashanah, uh, uh, um, uh, and making a kinyan that way, nonetheless, is going to be potter since the Isra Shabbos and the Isra Gneva happened at the same time. Ravashi Omer Kagon should say, if Yodu Lamata Mishlosha Vikiblo. Oh. So if Ashi says, you know what it's talking about over here? So yeah, if, if you would have slept in Rosh Hashanah, so, then it wouldn't be uh, Rosh Hashanah, right? So meaning, it wouldn't be a kinyan. So meaning, Rav, so Ravashi says, look, what he's doing is, he's schlepping the wallet from Rosh Hashanah into Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, he is chayev for Shabbos because it's hotza. But at the same time, you might say, but if he schleps in Talat Amos Rosh Hashanah, right? well, if he schleps in Rosh Hashanah, he's not making a Kenyan. Well, it's because the, what, what happened was that he schlepped it from the Rosh Hashanah into his hand that was in Rosh Hashanah. Let's go right there for a second. Ki the Rava, like Rava, the Rava, the Rava says, Yadu shal adam chashuv lo kaibo al that a fellow's hand is like considered like four tfachim. And four tfachim is large enough to consider, be considered a domain. And therefore, if we consider somebody's hand to be like four tfachim by four tfachim, so then we can, that means that it's significant enough to make a Kenyan also. And therefore, when he slaps it from Rishus HaYachid into his hand, that's within three tfachim of, of the ground in Rishus HaRabim, and we'll say love it, and therefore it's considered part of Rishus HaRabim, right? Because above that would be a Carmelist. Ooh, this is like, right? You're pulling out all the, the, the Shabbos and Erev and stuff. So, so he, he schleps it from Rosh Hashanah into his hand that's within three Tfachim of the ground in Rosh Hashanah. So he's high for Otsa from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. And he's also making a Kenyan when it goes into his hand because it's like Rabbi who says that a fellow's hand is like four Tfachim by four Tfachim, that it's, which makes it, means that it's significant with regard to being its own rishos, and therefore it's also significant with the, with regard to its ability to make a kinyan. And we say that even though he stole it, he's going to be potter, since at the time that uh, he, he, he would be, you know, at the time that he stole it, he, at the, that point, at that same time, he was also being, uh, he was doing otza and being chai for otza at that time as well. So he's chai for the Isra Shabbos, but potter for uh, paying for the uh, stolen object. Rav Acha Masni Ochi, so Rav Acha understands it, like, uh, we were understanding Rabbi Eliezer that, um, well, no, so, right, 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 so, 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 Rav Acha understands that you cannot schlep something in Rosh Hashanah and make a Kenyan on it, so therefore he has to say that, uh, it was like, like, like Ravashi says, that, uh, it, you know, he schlepped into his hand that was in Rosh Hashanah and his hand, that's why he made a Kenyan. Ravina Masni, whereas Ravina learns, the Olam the Apke, the Rosh Hashanah. No, really, it's talking about where he schlepped the wallet into Rosh Hashanah, not into his hand or see the Rosh Hashanah. None of that stuff. Or Rosh Hashanah nami kona. But Ravina says that if you schlep epis in Rosh Hashanah, it is able to make a kinyan. So therefore, he schlepped it from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. He's chayav for otza, and he also by schlepping it Rosh Hashanah, you make a kinyan. And but he's going to be potter for theft since. And it happened at, uh, you know, at the same time that he was chayib for, um, uh, Isra Shabbos. Okay. Um, fine. Uvishu Sarab, Nami, eh, Kono. Mitavai, Buduka, Deho, Masnis, and Komifliki. And, Rav Acha and Ravina, right, Rav Acha who says that schlepping something with Shusarab does not make a kinyan. And, um, Ravina who says that schlep, schlepping something in Shusarab does make a kinyan. So they argue about how to understand the inference of this following Mishnah. The Tanan is we learn in the Mishnah, Yemoshcho v'yotze, if Epis, there was a uh, cow. Your friend had a cow, you wanted the cow, so you were schlepping the cow to take it outside. Vamez bush was bailing, but before it was able to get outside, it Pasha died. Potter. 
So we say that in that case, he's going to be, um, he's going to be potter. All right. Fine. He's not going to have to pay the fellow back because it never left the, um, domain. Higbio Oshotzio Mishus Bailim. Now, if he picked it up or he took it out of the domain of the, of the fellow, Vamesh, and then it died, Chai. So Ravina, so Ravina, who says that schlepping epis in Rishus Arabim does, does make a kinyan, Diek Meresha. So he understands from the first part of the Mishnah. What does it say? It says, Yotze Vamesh, which was Bailin Potter. If he was doing a Mashiach, if he was schlepping it, and it died inside of the, the other guy's domain in the Rishus Ayachid, so, so, right, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the domain of the, of the friend, so then he's potter, but once he gets it outside and he schleps it in the Rishus Arabim, he would be chayim. So Ravina wants to say that schlepping something in Rishus Arabim, uh, makes a kinyan. Whereas Ravacha diek misefa, whereas Ravacha makes his inference from the second part of the Mishnah, right, where it says, higbio osho tzio mirshus bailim vameis chayim, that the Afka, if he picked it up or he took it out, then he's chayv. But by doing a, uh, but, but, but by, um, but by, um, where am I? Higbi Osho Tzio Mishus Ba'am Vameis Chayv. But if he schlepped it in Rishus Arabim, so then he would be potter. Ravina Diak Miresha, that Ravina says from the Resha, Hayam Moshcho Vyotse Vameis Bushus Ba'am Potter. Right? That if he was schlepping it and it died in, in the, in the, in, in, in the property of the owner, He's part of time the The reason is because it died in the in the in the in the domain of the owner. But if he took it outside to the Shusarab and schlepped it a shtickel, so then he would be chayv because he would make a kinyan on it. Whereas Ravacha Diek Misefa, whereas Ravacha says from the Sefa Ekbio Oshe Utsio that if he picked it up or if he took it out, Hotso Dumi Da Agba, that we're talking about a taking out that's similar to picking it up, Magba the Osi the Rishuse. So we're saying that when he picks it up, it goes into his domain. Alright, so also when he takes it out, is going into his domain. Alright, I'm not exactly sure what his domain is, but it's not Rishus Arab. Right, that if you were to take it into, out into Rishus Arab and schlep it into Rishus Arab, he wouldn't be able to make a kinyan. So Ravacha Kasha Reisha. So according to Ravacha, we have a question from the Rasha, right? Because the Rasha seems to be implied that if you schlep in Rishus Arabim, so then it would be a kinyan. The Ravina Kasha Sefer. According to Ravina, there's a question from the Sefer, because the Sefer seems to be implying that uh, if he schleps in Rishus Arabim, it wouldn't be a kinyan. So Rasha, the Ravacha, lo Kasha. No, Ravacha doesn't have a problem with the Rasha. Kamad lo Osi le Rishusei, Rishus Bailim, Karina Bay, right? Meaning, when it says that if he schlepped it in the, in the, in the property of the, in, in the, in the domain of the owner, it doesn't literally mean like his domain as opposed to Rishasarabim. It means his, his possession, right? So meaning, as long as, right, and he says, Kamadullah Asilah Shusei, which is Bailam Karinabe, and as long as the thief has not taken ownership of it, whether it's in the technical Rishus of the, right, right, uh, property of the owner or the Rishus Arabim, it doesn't make a difference. As, meaning, as long as it's, uh, it has not been acquired by the thief, it's considered Rishus Bailam. It's considered in the domain of the owner, right? So meaning, it doesn't necessarily mean his domain as in like his Dalar Amis, right? As in like his Chatser that he owns as opposed to the Rishus Arabim, and that if you take it out to Rishus Arabim, then you make a Kenyan. No, even if you take it out of the Rishus Arabim, it's still, yeah, right. He hasn't make a kin- made a kinyan on it, and it would still be considered the rishus abayim, right? The, the 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 domain of the owner is still upon it since he hasn't actually made a kinyan, even by taking it out to rishus harab. Say for the ravina lo kasha, and the second part of the mishnah is not a problem for ravina, who says that schlepping it in rishus harab does make a kinyan because otzah dumidagba lo aminun. Because uh, Ravina doesn't learn of that thing about, you know, the, right, since the Otso was in the domain of the thief, also the, uh, since the Akbar was in the domain of the thief, so, so the Otso is also to the domain of the thief, um, you know, implying that, um, you know, but not to the Shusarabim, uh, R- R- Ravina doesn't hold of that, and therefore he doesn't hold of that comparison, and therefore he could say even schlepping with Shusarabim uh, would be a Kenyan. Well, friends, that was that for Lamar Alf, Masechta Ksubis. There was a lot of conceptual stuff there, you know, how to understand the uh, Otsa and, you know, 
Akira and Anocha. And so, right, so we, we were really analyzing um, the opinion of Rav Chizda from yesterday, who said that according to Ibn Khuni ben Akana, even though he says that, you're, that uh, we would say, Kamle by by by, by Nisr Karis, that if you're Chayib Karis, you're part of him paying. However, if a fellow picks up Chaleb, and now he's Chayib for stealing the Chaleb, and then he eats it after that, he's still going to be Chayib for the Chaleb, he's not going to be Potter. We then compared that to throwing an arrow for Amos and Rishis where the, um, where the, um, where, um, um, you know, when you pick up the arrow and you throw it, and along the way it tears some stuff, we say over there, you're Potter. So why would you be Potter there? Bechai by the Chaleb, we gave two distinctions. One is because you have to pick up the arrow in order for it to then land later and be chayev for Shabbos as opposed to you don't have to pick up the chayev, you can eat it like a dog. Alternatively, once you throw the arrow, you can't take it back. But the, but the chayev, once you pick it up, you could still, you could still, uh, put it down again. We then, uh, tried to, we, we then tried to compare the arrow to the situation when you pick up a wallet in Mishus Harabim, in, in, in your friend's house and then take it outside, right? We say that you are Chayv in that case, but shouldn't we say that just like you have to pick up the arrow in order to throw it, you also have to pick up the wallet in order to take it outside and you should be potter for the theft? So we gave essentially two possible answers. One is that he kind of stopped, he picked it up and he started walking, then he stopped and then he started again. Or it's like Ben who says that every step is basically picking up and taking down. We then started looking into the uh, next part of that, Bryce, which says that, but if instead of picking up the wallet and taking it outside, he schlepped it outside, so then he'd be potter for the, potter for the theft. And we gave three possibilities for how exactly the schlepping outside works because initially we were assuming that it, you can't schlep, you know, if you schlep something with Shusarabim, you don't actually take ownership of it. So then why would it be, you know, wouldn't it be considered like a Geneva? So we gave three options. One is that you schlepped it into, into the, uh, Tzidei Rishusarabim, the sides of Rishusarabim, the sides of Rishusarabim would, would be considered like Rishusarabim to say that you're Chayev for Otsah and Shabbos, but you would still be able to make a Kenyan in that uh, area. Another option is Ravashi's uh, suggestion that he um, schlepped it outside into his hand, and his hand is like Rava says, dollar a four tefachim by four tefachim, so it's considered significant enough to make a kinyan. So he'd be chayev um, for otza, but potter for uh, the theft. And finally, we gave an answer that uh, it's like uh, Ravina, who says that actually, if you schlep something in Rishusarabim. It does make a, a Kenyan, and therefore he's Chayev for the uh, Otsa, and he's going to be Chayev for the uh, Gneva at the same time. Well, friends, that was the Lamed Aleph of Mesech Tereksubis. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.